the entertainment highlight of the week. Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji Nick, Nick Show. Show. Hello. Hello. Good day. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Good evening. Good night. You've, that's repetition, isn't it? No, that it's loud? not. No, it's not. Because one was saying good night as in good night, go to sleep. <laughs> and the other was saying you're Stewart's a very... inquiry. You're a very good night. Oh, I see. Wow, well, uh, goodness. Give that one. No! Oh! Ah, lotness. Yeah. See. No, you, just can thank, uh, you can thank uh, Colin... Uh, for for that good night I really quip, call it yeah, Smith, yeah, yeah, in an email, he said that you could use good night. You know, I thought I'm going to deploy it. Good night. Uh, yes, this is the Benji and Nick show, and we talk about cult television. Benji, explain some more. Yeah, cult TV, things from the past, things from the. the I was going to say things from the future. That's not true. Things from the past, <laughs> well, set in the future. TV that you might want to forget. TV you might remember. We answer questions people send in. We talk about the things that we love, and as well as that, we also uh, we do episode commentaries, which is what we're going to be doing today. Because this That's week right. we're doing a live commentary of yeah. the Sunmakers, a Tom Baker. A Doctor Who story from the 70s. What year is it, Nick? You'll know it better than me. Mm. 1970, 46. 77, I want to say. Let's have a look. The Sun mm. Anyway, get your DVDs or BritBox or other streaming service all queued up and ready for that. Was 77. So, I thought so. We'll also be talking to Jamie, son of Jerry Anderson, along the way, if we manage to catch him at a convenient juncture. Yes, well, quite. In a moment, we'll be looking at your Facebook uh, messages and email sent to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Ooh. But first, let's just say uh, the Benji and Nick show is proud to be sponsored by The Village Shop, the online e-store run by the Unmutual website and Coit Media Limited, your one-stop shop for all things Prisoner, Danger Man and Patrick McGowan, including DVDs, Blu-rays, books, CDs, audio dramas, clothing, photos, homeware, and gifts. New items are added weekly. Mm. Benji and Nick Show listeners can enjoy a 10% discount on all purchases. This is where we get to the nitty gritty by using the code LOCHNESS10. That's L O C H N E S S 1 0. All one word, as it were, no spaces, and the letters are all uppercase. Use that code at the checkout. A further donation will also be made to Hope House Children's Hospice at no cost to you. The address of the website is www, you know that thing, all the Ws, theprisonershop.co.uk. The Prisoner Shop being all one word. Let's have a look. Recommend something? Oh, there's so many goodies on there. Well, I'm looking in the clothing section at the moment, and there's a rather fetching uh, Lego minifigure number six t shirt, which is absolutely Uh, fab. How could clothing be made of Lego? It's a Lego, (laughs) yeah, Lego, a Lego shirt. Um, You can also get a replica number two scarf, which is an absolute must have in this if you live in the UK. You think uh, it's blue, yellow, and white. Fight. Says I here. I to get one of those. Ever wanted to be your own number two? Well, now you can with this very close match to the public school scarf worn in the series by some of the number two actors, including Leo McKern. Well, mm, he just very close just match. asking for that. Really, I love I love anything like replica things. I absolutely love. Um, you know, it's it's one of those. I think it's one of those things where if you're walking around with something that's a replica of something or a little in joke or a nod. I think it's when the proper fans of something see it and they, there's that unwritten look of like, I know what you're doing and I, and I approve. Nice. So yeah. Well, look, there's the prisoner shop. Uh, we've got to zoom on. We've got so much to get through in this podcast. A whole <laughs> episode of the Sunmakers. Get it right. Let's go to Facebook and zoom through these. Do you want to read the first one? Certainly. This one is from Marios uh, Arakulilios. I can't say it. Sorry. Um, (laughs) Hi, Nick and Benji. Hope you're well. Uh, I'm a fan of the Dark Season story by Russell T. Davis. Any chance of that coming to audio? It was great at its time. I think that's more of a question for Big Finish. When I asked for questions, people people kept asking Big Finishy questions, but I don't think there's any chance of that, even though it was, of course, great. Jonathan Brindle uh, says, at Nicholas Briggs Official, could you advise when announcements for the upcoming Big Finish Day will start? This is a Big Finish question. (laughs) Um, More will be coming. It's sold out now, Big Finish Day, on the 6th of June at uh, Quad in Derby. So there you go. Top fan Jenny Shirt. Hello, Jenny, says, if you could 
could play any role on TV in any TV programme apart from Doctor Who, which role would you both choose? Which line is the one line you've always wanted to say? Only a line which is said by the character you have chosen. What would I like to do? I'll play Cat Weasel and say, nothing works. That's Cat nothing Weasel works. Is, a, is an absolute top one. I suppose I would. Uh, the only character that springs to mind that I'd love to play, I suppose, would actually be the Crow Man of all people. Because I've, I was, oh, I was, where's the, where's 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 but I, I suppose equally, it makes me think: should I just become a chimney sweep so that I can wear the outfit? <laughs> yeah, because all modern chimney sweeps wear that outfit. But they, they, well, yeah, well, quite. Well, they do at weddings, don't they? <laughs> the wedding they have, they go to, and then I could drink milk out of a saucer. You know how you just <laughs> where's her? You cannot go around causing havoc in the countryside. <laughs> okay, what's up next? Uh, Richard Tingley, uh, I maintain that <laughs> cheap funny. pink sausages are much tastier than proper herb-filled butcher's sausages. Discuss! <laughs> well, I know there is, there is a sort of... The cheap and nasty synthetic horrible ones, there's a sort of tang to them that you can't resist. But I do like um, herb-filled butcher's sausages as well. I like sausages a, I like are generally a, bad for you. I like a good local sausage, I have to say. Um there's one uh, next to you there. There is, yes. <laughs> um, I, I like a good, yeah, good local sausages are nice. I tell you the ones which are are really suspect are those sausages. Um, what was the? What are they called? They're they're the ones that you put in the freezer. Um, Savaloys? No. No, the brand. The brand is called um, Free, freezer sausages. <laughs> No, Frosty oh, come, sauce. come on, Nick. You get your sausage head on. But it's a particular brand of sausages that are very, 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 very cheap. And when you eat them, they taste Richmond sausages. And oh, when, yes, when yes, you yes. eat Richmond sausages, they're very, yes. very nice. But every time I eat them, I always think the same thing. I think there is next to no meat in this. Why am I enjoying <laughs> this? This is hideous. Sawdust. <laughs> Absolutely hideous. But yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm cra- I, you know, chorizo sausages. Yes. I often just when I buy a chorizo, I'll just eat it. I'll just chop it and eat it. I won't even cook it. I'll just eat it. It's Dirty. lovely. It's all you need. Dirty chorizo. My son Ben likes the the cheap, horrible Richmond sausages, the thin ones. You know, they are nice, but and they he are eat for the, the ends rubbish. of them. He leaves the ends. Best bit. Ridiculous. Love the end. Love, so love I just the end of the nick them off his plate. Uh, top fan Laura Valinsky says, v- Valinsky, sorry, Laura, what's the matter with me? I've always been fascinated by how similar you and Benji sound to me. Oh, really? And my ah. friends. All oh, right. Uh, when they get to reminiscing about shows you loved as a kid, are there any US shows you watched as kids? Uh, that you remember fondly my fave was the great american hero as a kid quite painful to watch now mind you i wonder why a bumbling superhero who lost the the user manual for the super suits the aliens gave him. <laughs> that sounds pretty i've never seen that i used to watch a lot of the um the batman 1966 that for me oh, yes that yes. for me is just my child i remember it so clearly sitting in my old front room in, in my chair watching that and i loved it you're far too young. I, I watched it at the time when it was coming out and being made. Um, and also Lost in Space and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and Land of the Giants. All that Irwin Allen rubbish, um, of which I adored as well. But it's almost unwatchable now. A lot of it, yeah. I mean, i tell you what I was watching the other day was Gilligan's Island, which I've not seen in a million I've years. I've never, ever seen it. It's, I've yeah, only heard the jokes. It's pretty It's pretty rubbish, I'll be, I'll be honest. But, you know, I, I, I was one of the first people, certainly at my school, to get Sky. And so we had access to a lot of these American shows that wouldn't normally get shown around. But, yeah, I mean, my in ter- when it comes to that, it's Batman, because that was always on around lunchtime, I think, when I was growing up. Okay, we're so short of time. Um, just quick answers to these from Rick Davy. Hey, hey, what's your favourite, absolute favourite regional TV ident of the nineteen seventies? It uh, is my question to you and Benji. Mine is Anglia. Rick, what do you think? Oh, come on! Between that, between that, HTV and Southern Television are my two. Southern because it's my local. HTV because it's the best. 
Uh, yeah, brilliant. Although I have been watching stuff with the ATV. Ding, ding, ding. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. Bing, boom, boom. Ba, ba, ba. Anyway, Jason, <laughs> uh, we could actually fizz, uh, fill up oh, and, whole well, podcast And Yorkshire. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, Yeah, very on. unimaginative. No, ma- no animation. I don't like that. <laughs> Zero points for that. Uh, Jason Arbuckle said, if there was any TV show or movie you could adapt for Big Finish. I'm not answering Big Finish question. Philip Markham says, uh, loved last week's podcast as it helped me whilst sick off work with the good old Lurgy although yeah. it made me watch loads of season four of the Avengers to help me feel better that's when we were talking about the man eater of Surrey Green my question says will the Benji and Nick episode covering Callan either the TV series or the movie absolutely do should do that and we should do the we'll TV do series definitely Mark Bosley says I love 70s Doctor Who as much as the next man but can we share the commentary love around other Doctors how about the rescue or Tomb of the Cybermen for instance well I'm not opposed to it i would love to watch tomb of the cybermen it's one of my favorite stories absolutely up there top of the top of the list for me i just feel that i might be a bit more cruel about the old ones because they do get i mean i love them don't get me wrong but they do get a bit ridiculous and old-fashioned it's fine we'll, we'll watch delta and the bannerman then Oh, God. Um, right, top fan Alex Pass says, The Cyber Briggs is in his cyber shirt. <laughs> Revenge Cyber Voice. It is a bit chilly. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Tom Nichols says, What is the most Doctor-esque moment you have ever witnessed from an actor who played the Doctor when they weren't in character? What do you think? Oh, I don't know. To be honest, it's just it's just Sylvester McCoy with his stick, isn't it? Just, yes. it's, just it's just that, isn't it? And, and occasionally holding an umbrella. He's just the Doctor that's what I was going to say that Sylvester and Tom are the two who are most Absolutely. like the Doctor in real life they are you You think if there was a real Doctor Who that it's probably one of those two Absolutely 100% um, Jessica Shlosky says hello Jessica I'll admit I have a bit to catch up on so if this has already been <sighs> discussed on. just ignore it this is a good question, actually. The Benji and Nick show is all about cult media, but how do you personally define what makes something cult? Is it based on a personal sense of nostalgia? The age of the media in question? Is it based on some quality of the fan base or restricted to certain genres? I was wondering what your take on this was. What it's a really Benji? tough one, is it? I would define cult... So it's cult as, as in old things, television that was popular at its time and and has a reputation to this day but then having said that we cover things that were are, are old and people haven't even heard of so, so it is a tough one yeah. i see th- i think it comes into the same bracket as what is canon in doctor who it's whatever you like it's very true very <laughs> whatever true. we say we say it so it is listen we're running out of time L- luke Pietnik says, isn't it time Kachunk was accepted into the Ka-chunk. Oxford English Dictionary? Which is what I say at the end. Pressing stop now, Kachunk. Ka-chunk. Its definition should be to cease recording an archaic, on an archaic media device. Oh, are you calling <laughs> us an archaic media device? Correct. And when are we getting the three-part Benji and Nick chalet girl analysis we were promised? Gosh, what, watch, this, watch this space is all I'm saying. Have you ever seen it? I've not chalet. seen it. I've avoided it at all costs. Maybe oh, I will. Forget. I, th- I think it was Luke who said that it's nowhere near as bad as you expect it to be. We'll watch it one day. One day. Look, there are a few more comments and there's an email, but I just think I'll have to save them for next time. So um, we'll move on to the commentary, I think. We're, we're, we're up against it time-wise today. M- massive apologies to everybody. But uh, so life I'm, schedules life, and all that. Life. I'm finding Brit Box. Doctor Who. Tom Baker season um is that 15 is it yes it is season of goodwill so what do you do you press the story and it just starts doesn't it it does yeah bing are you, are you there yeah do a three two one and we'll three two one click here we da, are da, da, the da. ever familiar title sequence there in ah, all its glory marvelous i always get irritated at the uh the tardis light at the top of the police box there it's not not the right one. No, it's I don't know what 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 on earth it is. Got some kind of ambulance light, isn't it? Yes, I don't know. They must have thought the other one was too detailed to have as too a fiddly image. Understand? Yeah, can't be bothered. Was this the season that started this um, font? I think it was. I think it was. Yeah. Now I I 
I haven't got... The, can I just quickly say, Dudley Simpson's score for this episode is outstanding and so detailed. And, and it exists, so doesn't it? It does exist. Does it? I think it, it does. Exist. Exists. Oh. I've got next to no memory of this at all. Oh, wow. I haven't seen I've this since the UK recently. Gold days. Well, of course, I saw it at the time it was first broadcast and it was repeated the next year. And did you enjoy it at the time? I did. I remember my heart sinking when I saw that first very blank set and that stupid window up there but actually it's it's the design in this is outstanding it's got a real statement to it hasn't it the whole story is a, a very political story and a very interesting sort of oh, yeah. stand out design story, statement isn't it? and in terms yeah, of a yeah. design perspective uh, it's kind of similar isn't it it's, it's very quite much theatrical isn't it it's sort of you feel like you can see past where you're supposed to be seeing definitely like this sort of big rib cage. Do you think it's like entering the belly of the beast kind of thing here? He's kind going of. to see the tax man. It's sort of, it's all designed to be sort of ever so slightly uh, intimidating, isn't it? But there's lots of backcloths and things. You think, am I supposed to be seeing that big black area? I'm not sure. It feels like a set, but in a sort of wonderfully stylized way. I love his pronunciation. Mahogany. <laughs> his terrible hat. <laughs> Mahogany. Mahogany. I think this is for me the whole Graham Williams thing when he was forced not to do scary stories and make it more make it more quirky and funny. I am a bit of that old fashioned opinion that that sort of spoiled it, but I think it's a perfect balance here. Because this is actually, although it's all sort of ho ho ho, little go at the tax man, it's actually horrible. It's cruel. thought-provoking, cruel, thought-provoking television, isn't it, really? And it's Doctor Who at a level where children can watch it and be entertained by the story. Yeah. And people of a more inquiring mind can watch it and think, I know what's going on here. Which I think is always the best when Doctor Who does get that balance. And it has to be said that this, the structure of the plot in this episode in particular is it's a masterclass in Doctor Who. This is how to structure your opening episode. It is just super. Yeah. Your father's own personal contribution. Nice cap. <laughs> These two are fantastic actors, aren't they? They are, and they do a very... They're, they're sort of... You can see that they're, they're enjoying it, and, you know, one's playing very conceited... The other is, and you can see the fear on his face. I mean, that's the interesting thing for me, because I listened to the audio of this so much at the time. This is like music to me. I can hear all the all the voices, the tune of the voices. I recognise the tune. Oh, Citizen Corporal. Oh, you know, all this. But you coming at it afresh. From age, I mean, what's your opinion of it? I mean, do you think it's hammy and ridiculous? I don't, but then I'm the wrong person to ask, can't I? Because <laughs> I enjoy all this stuff. You know, this story reminds me of of coming down in the morning when it was on UK Gold and I'd watch my watch my tapes of it. I, God yeah. knows if I've still got them. But I think it's... I think as as a Tom Baker story, is it's fantastic. You know, I, yeah. I love this season in general. I think it's a great season. Take your capsules. But the contrast in costumes as well, this sort of, you know, on the one hand you've got... See the seriousness here. Sorry to interrupt. And he is telling him to go without sleep to pay for his father's funeral, which has already happened. He's, it's horrible. It's cruel, it is isn't it? Horrible. Who, who is the guy who plays the gatherer, by the way? Oh, I can find out for you. I'd like to venture a controversial opinion that I think that, you know, Louise Jameson has spoken about how things between her and Tom Baker at the time here were a bit frosty. And I, you sort of... Tom's quite aggressive in this, isn't he? And I, I know what he's like when he gets like this. And everything's a little bit too harsh, I feel. It seems, you know, like he An didn't like the character. Yeah, he, he didn't like the character of Leela. And even though he does all sorts of nice, affectionate things towards her in the story, he's a good actor. And I just feel that there's... Yeah, shut up, he said to Aaron. As a... Yeah, that's shut up. I mean, oh, it's, it's horrid. This also puts the lie to um, John Leeson's assertion that there was no effect on K9's voice. There's blatantly quite that's, a huge that's, effect. That's going on through K9. a speaker. 
and also going through some modulation. Yeah, that's yes. the that's what I use if I'm doing the if I'm doing a canine voice effect for Big Finish, I'll use that voice style. You see, how much of this was in the script, or you know, I know what Tom's like, all that. You did, you didn't, you did, you didn't. I don't, I think he he put that in. See, I love one of the things I love about um, Louise Jameson's performance as Leela is if you watched her and her face and the way that she looks and interacts with everything she's just fantastic it's, she's really taking it in you know she's curious she's it's just yeah. superb I think I think that costume's too revealing well quite um, <laughs> but yes I think uh, I think she's amazing actually uh, I was too young to really get Leela uh, I think the overt sexuality of it I found that a little bit disturbing. It can be quite jarring. I mean, I, I was always intrigued by the idea of it. But at the same time, I always felt the doc why would the doctor travel with a savage? Just feel like it yeah. wouldn't be intellectually challenging, but cuz she but must she be is freezing there. Yeah. And here, the here when they say it is warm and everything and you could see the wind blowing. <laughs> well, it's just I know exactly the type of day that is. <laughs> like, yeah. Cold and unpleasant. But when and the doctor says cloudy. quite warm, I just believed him. And I think, oh, that must be a warm breeze. And and bless Louise, she is acting like she's not, her physicality is not sort of like, Christ, it's cold. It's, you know, she's very free and open. Great yeah. location to get that. The roof of somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. I hazard London, have. based on the... No, I don't think so. The little skyline you can see in the background and a couple of buildings. Can you? You could I do it in, in the previous shot, you could. This is a, such a desperate scene. Again, you see, or oh, make Doctor Who more lighthearted, get the horror out of it. And Robert Holmes sneaks in attempted suicide. It's, uh, yeah, well, absolutely. It's dark. This is so, it brings tears to my eyes. But it's the way that he's doing it as well. You, This was in the trailer, this bit, I remember. at Tom's amazing costume there. Mm. <laughs> this is just quintessentially what Doctor Who's about. It's helping out, stopping someone from destroying their life. It's brilliant. In a way that's not invasive. You know, he's mm. he's being the Doctor. He's, off, he's offering a man a jelly baby who's about to jump off a building. I mean... And look, look what the jelly baby is. Have you seen? <laughs> is it licorice? Yeah, it's a licorice all sorts. I remember being really upset about that as a pedantic <laughs> teenager. Said, it's not a jelly baby. But of course, Tom did that on purpose. Just to provoke yeah. a reaction. Oh, I always this... love things in the, in programmes where they have imaginary games. I don't quite understand. <laughs> this is just is him just deciding counting which... money? Or... No, he's just deciding which sweet to eat. <laughs> you watch. He picks it up and eats it. Look. <laughs> it's. Look. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> man. Strange I like the idea that that silhouetted man in the window up top is just Dudley Simpson waiting to do his <laughs> cue. <laughs> Are you loving the music? Love it. Oh, how can you not? It's, it's particularly Dudley Simpson. good. It's Quintus. I love his trainers. He's just wearing some some standard old trainers there. Yeah, that company branding on them, I think. Pretty I believe it. It's warm shift. there. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It must be freezing. It looks so cold. Security camera up there in the corner. Wonderfully seventies. Well, of course, that science uh, fiction design, isn't it? <laughs> that, that features later. There's an important sequence in one of the later episodes where they set up a loop where it looks like the doctor's just pacing backwards and forwards when actually they're they're doing something else. You know, it's crazy. It's very rare that I have next to no memory of a Doctor Who. It's interesting because this is this is printed on my brain. Every noise of it. <laughs> it's the Gatherer. <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if I stood here and didn't, uh, didn't realise and then ran yes I think I'll do that <laughs> I 
You can you can just hear how cold it is everywhere. In there, you can hear the the wind. <laughs> What's the name of the actor playing the gatherer? Richard Leach. He's amazing. He's brilliant. And he, and as well as that, he's playing it complete with complete conviction despite the yeah. fact that he looks ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's Doctor Who to the core, isn't that it? That is. If you can do it's that, it's ridiculous. You can do anything. But play it with complete conviction, totally. And he's an amazing actor. I think this is his best ever performance. I've seen him in loads of things, but I don't think he had as much fun as this in anything else he ever did. It's superb. Well, it is great. It's a fun story, isn't it? And it's an, you know, imagine that though. You you wait to do your Doctor Who. You know, your standard yeah. actor's Doctor Who and you get given a really good story like this. Yeah. Quite incredible. I mean, he spent his life playing bank managers and politicians and, you know, and and of course he is a sort of financial ruler here, but... Look at I it, mean, he's the, loving it, he's loving yeah. it. <laughs> he's such a smug character. He's like, oh, yeah, so I know everything. Candle. Rubbing his hands, the money, you know, it's that what intricacies of the performance are lovely and the typical thing of uh, robert holmes writing mentioning other things that happen outside the story the candor conspiracy we never find <laughs> out about it he just throws that in you know it's about world building isn't it it's you, yes. be you believe things like that because you just assume that oh that's the thing that's happened that's going on in that world isn't it it's very real because people are always referring in in real life people are always referring to big other events aren't they you know definitely that's the line about the tax man coming up here that's no answer <laughs> hey yeah that nod you know. yeah perhaps everyone runs from the tax man <laughs> That's just he so just looks like a bloke paid. with a sort of beach towel on his back doesn't he <laughs> you know, just just gonna go down to the go down to the pool not going for a swim man right, and he's just got a very big head and that's actually a swimming cap <laughs> <laughs> Now that would be a brilliant comedy moment, wouldn't it? If he took his head off <laughs> and it was that, that shape. shape. <laughs> what are you oh, looking no. at me like that for, man? <laughs> I think he could be another one of our podcast characters, the gatherer. Yes. yes. What was that pronunciation you had? Mahogany. Ma Mahogany. <laughs> What's all this sort of Mayan -like type look as well? You know, with these this iconography going on there is very interesting yeah. stylistic choice well it's the sun makers it's the spirit it's it's the it's the um logo of the the company because company. they make suns it's it's surrounded by suns there's a line in a minute about how many suns there are and that's all the suns around the face you see yeah. God, that's, that's what i believe terrible stylistic design i mean if if you know if they have to make another sun they have to redesign the logo every time yeah, i know better it's make a disaster. another and uh, here we are i think he might. Oh no, it's a bit later when they're going underground. <gasps> One of them will end up in Blake Seven. <laughs> so true. You know, it's Villa from. Yeah. Blake Seven. Oh yeah. Who's dressed pretty much like Villa anyway? Yes. <laughs> it was his audition. Wouldn't it be interesting this story though if if everybody was wearing suits? And it was done in that, you know, it'd be a completely different story, wouldn't it? It would. It would I mean, the message would not be as subtle, I suppose. No. Yes, they've really dressed it up with sci-fi nonsense window dressing, haven't they? A gorgeous location. That looks like the underground or something. It does, doesn't it? London Underground. It must be, surely. I mean, look at that. Yes. Ah, here we go. There's no light on this planet. Yes. How many suns? Six suns on Pluto. But again, you see, things like that, you know, these things, everybody knows that. It helps to build a world where you think, yeah, that's, you know... God, it's just gorgeous. I just lo I love that brutalistic uh, 
you know location work like that it's lovely makes me it? think as well of you know um the invasion of time with all those corridors you know and the swimming pool looking sort of places isn't it i hated that <laughs> well i hate that for the fact that it's the tardis but i like the fact that it's good good locations yeah yeah i no, refused definitely. i refused to believe that that's what the tardis was like you know i just refused to believe it yes same here i was really well, disgusted. I will not accept that uh oh oh here they come that's a great shot of Tom there yeah and you're from Blake 7 hmm. hey just when he thought K9 wasn't going to be in it he manages to not only open the door but get over that massive uh <laughs> flooring issue did you like the sound effect there that brilliant brilliant dick mills doing his thing i uh, i remember this set i was fascinated by it and i was i wanted to remember it so i drew it while during the no um, way really during the repeat i thought i must draw that set and so i sketched it yeah it's crazy the innocence there of never well, hey, thinking thought, you'll I'll, never see it again exactly and here i am watching it whenever i want whenever you like yeah with my mate benji nasty gets hit uncalled for you could see this on the stage though i mean this yes. if, if this was presented as a a theater piece you would it, it would work perfectly it would wouldn't it maybe the canine bits wouldn't yeah well you just the, ax that bit wouldn't you <laughs> Put, shove him in at the end and Ajax they always go on about Ajax don't they they do of course Ajax was a famous um, sink cleaner at the time that bloke in the middle there doesn't he look just like um, Oliver Reed he has a similar look he looks very much like him he later found a, a regular employment and perhaps fame in Heartbeat didn't he yes yes he did did he play policeman yeah yeah he was yeah. a desk sergeant I think before Derek Folds became the desk sergeant, I think. I don't know. He also was in an awful lot of things at the time. I remember he played a barrister in Crown Court and... Good gig. One of those actors. I mean, he's an excellent actor. Absolutely brilliant, reliable performance. Staff the camp. I think, to be honest, in this, from what I've seen so far, everybody is really doing a good job. You know, nobody's letting this down. Well, even the collector, who is uh, ridiculously over the top performance, <laughs> well, quite, but it works. It does work. It Everything works, doesn't it? I remember not liking that aspect much at the time, and then I realised I could impersonate it, so I quite <laughs> liked it. <laughs> God, the fear on his face is just fair. He's really like I just I you know what fantastic acting there. He really does look completely petrified. Yes, Leela being particularly violent there. See, I hated all this at the time. You've touched me again and I feel it to you. And stuff. I just thought, oh, so embarrassing. I don't know why. I don't know why I found it. I think it's brilliant now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... go on, K9. There you go. I love all that stuff when the doctor there's a sort of genteel aspect to the doctor and when he's presented with oiks he's a bit sort of yeah well uh, fine yeah it's nice here it's he, he, yeah that he does that sort of meandering approach with them doesn't he oh well yes. you know it's, uh, nice here yes. yeah, they've I, made that screen look quite interesting by doing that sort of weird cutout around it haven't they that god that just sounds like canine just sounds ready to collapse doesn't he <laughs> <laughs> just uh, looking back at the previous scene in the uh, gatherer's office I don't, that's a huge cash point card isn't it um the the uh, we don't still don't know what those blokes standing around in the background are doing yeah it's not it's not particularly explained is it how, just how many of... talmars do they get paid for <laughs> standing there randomly well why not you know it's a good gig isn't it <laughs> God, imagine lugging that one around with you all the time. So this must be... There were credit cards 
Yeah, credit cards were around in the 70s. I don't know, were, there, were there cash point cards at this point? Good point. Um, it's funny that they thought it should be so big, a consume card, whatever that is. I'd love it if cards were like... Uh, it'd be inconvenient, but I'd love the idea if they were like cartridges. <laughs> eight tracks. <laughs> yeah, big, I love an eight track. They'd it's, actually... There's enough room to put about £100 worth of notes in that, isn't <laughs> Absolute madness, isn't it? Absolute madness. Well, you wouldn't... If they were like that, you wouldn't bother, would you? No. First cash machine was installed in 1967 outside oh, right. Barclays Bank in Enfield, North London. Wow. When was the second one installed? <laughs> in 1979. The 457th was installed in 2002. I didn't use a cash point machine until 1979. Wow, and I had I had never seen one before that. I bet you felt like well, you felt like you were in this story when you did. Ask me how much money I took out. How much money did you take out? Ten pounds. <laughs> Ex- it's quite a lot in those days. Well, it was yeah, you know. Were you buying a, a television? Well, I was, I was a student, and I was buying food to live. Maybe a, maybe enough drinks for the week. Well, quite. Yeah, for quite. Well, it was 49p a pint. God. What in these red barrel? <laughs> if only. I, what I don't C- get in that location mild. with... Um, courage mild. What I don't get in that location with canine is that weird pile of what look like pancakes. Oh, yeah. Praise the company's pancakes. See, look, there they are. Yeah. Put the tracker on the eight, Jack. They're big pancakes, aren't they? They are. Those are my pancakes. That lovely noise with the, when the screen goes off. Wee. Yes. yes. All these actions it. he does with his hands around his face. Yeah. It's brilliant. I can't get over the idea that his head's that shape. <laughs> Yeah, where do you think he keeps all this great financial advice? <laughs> he has to have a head that size. <laughs> There's someone sitting at a desk up there as well, isn't there? Yeah, it's Dudley Simpson with his keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> They're not moving. Well, I suppose there's no music at the moment, then. Yeah, when the music happens, one dances and the other plays. <laughs> Look at that studio floor there. Yeah, oh yes. You can see all the scrapes where the cameras have been. The inner retinue is, of course, a uh, uh, play on words, as it were, of inland revenue. Those are particularly shabby corridors, aren't they? They really are. I mean, that's, that's you know, that's dressing up and doing all these elaborate sets and then thinking, oh, we'll just do those, grab those ones from another story. That'll do. Tense, please. I wonder that that wasn't in the script. Everything's what a fine. Swine. <laughs> there you have it. Brilliant, brilliant cliffhanger there. Wasn't oh, it? look at that face. Yeah, when he just sort of does that kind of. Oh well. <laughs> oh, this is it. Sort of, you got me. I'm stuck. There we go. Well, we are. cracking first part there. What have we learnt? Some people have massive heads, um, <laughs> and the world will be better with cartridge like credit cards any other lessons we take from it um yeah keep your pancakes in a long london underground tunnel (laughs) um (laughs) superb stuff superb stuff well there we have it folks the sun makers so what are we going to do next week um I don't know. We've got to talk to Jamie Anderson. We do though. have to talk to Jamie, don't we? Yes. I totally seen. Uh, I haven't got my phone. Oh, you fool! You old. Should I I phone my him? Phone. God. Can you just talk to the folks while I go and get it? Yeah. Sure. 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 Hmm. Sure. I won't be long. All right then. All right. So whilst we're here, I'm going to go through and play a few sound effects. First one. Then this is the sound of a. Elephant, that's always a good one, isn't it? Um, no, I'm just searching now. Uh, it actually said the elephant man, which we don't want because he just sounds like a regular man played by John Hurt. Here's the sound of an elephant. Interestingly enough, they used the sound of an elephant for the T Rexes in Jurassic Park. 
not a lot of people know that. Not this sound, obviously. No T-Rex sounds like that. I mean, that would just be absurd, right, wouldn't back, it? Back. Oh, he's back. There we go. He'll never oh, know. Shit. Gone into episode two. Well, you shouldn't have left it on, should you? You fool, you old fool. Ah, huh. I left it on the uh, coffee table where I was having my sandwich for lunch. Well, easily done. Just realised that the, the story after this one is Underworld. Oh, which, which, is which goes down, I think, as the most boring Doctor Who story. Yeah, yeah. The, dread, the CSO in that one was dreadful, wasn't it? Well, it was just all CSO, wasn't it? Yeah. Shall I phone Jamie? I think you should. <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> We've just watched The Sunmakers, episode one. Excellent. And how was that? Benji, how was it? Very good. Great telly. review that is yeah straight to the point no messing good and you... I, I watched Picard oh, oh yes what did he think yeah I, I, I really enjoyed it so yes I thought it was fun and uh, nostalgic and punchy and not too clunky for a, a series opener well, I watched the first nine minutes and 41 seconds and didn't like it. But then when I yeah. went from to 42 seconds, I suddenly started enjoying it. Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. So it suddenly got really good after that. I thought it was going to be a bit self-indulgent. Benji, give us your view. I thought it was fa absolutely fantastic television. I thought it was sort of... It could have been self-indulgent and at the start, but it hits all the right boxes. You know, you get your fill of Picard... And it makes you want to watch more. It expands on the universe and gives you questions that need answering. Yeah. Tick, 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 tick and tick. New characters and a new series you're creating. Tick, 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 tick and tick. Yeah. Snappy title there. Ah. So we're a bit short of time, really, Jamie. Anything you want to tell us? Uh, um, not really. I need to tidy my office, but I'm... I'm up against uh, deadline things, so mm, forget it. No, not, nothing of great significance. Sorry. Can you tell us what to do next week? Uh, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's looking at his DVD collection. Yeah, it's not looking great. Unfortunately, <laughs> my my DVD collection is eighty percent Doctor Who, fifteen percent Jerry Anderson, and five percent other. <laughs> and the other is uh, is not that appropriate for what you do. I should. Oh, <laughs> oh so, dear. Well, no, this is a modern film um, stuff. No, I don't want that. I mean, is, it, is it about time you did another Anderson? Yeah, okay. Episode? We could certainly do another Anderson. Have you ever tried The Protectors? So I tell you what, it's only fair if we go to the beginning of the series and watch the first episode. Maybe do the Ed Bishop one some other time. Um, if you enjoy episode one enough, what a great idea. Yes, so we'll do that. Thank you. The protectors. Yeah. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Cheers, mate. Speak soon. Good rest of the podcast. Bye. 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 Right, doing this in record time. Yeah. So it's The Protectors next week, episode one of The Protectors. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? It's going to be good fun, I think. I'm looking forward to it. Not seen it before. Outside, yeah, so it's a new I, one for me. I, yeah, I won't have seen it for years and years. I, I have seen episodes of The Protectors, not sure whether I've seen it first. Anyway, time to get close to the microphone. Yes, it's time to dash off now. Well, it's uh, goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Don't forget to send your emails to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Pressing stop now. Ka-chunk. <laughs>